What's up guys, welcome to today's video, special one today, and it's been coming a long time. So during the last two years, which it shouldn't have been two years, our friend David Coleman decided to build one of the craziest S15 Sylvia's I think Ireland's ever seen. He decided to put a K24 turbo in a beautiful S15, did all the bodywork, did all the interior, but it's taken a long time to get to this stage, which we are here in Bradley Motorworks to see the car get mapped for the first time. We don't know how it's gonna go, could go good, could go bad, could be a successful video, could be one where it needs parts, we have no idea. But one thing that is very good about this video is that we actually go and check out what the Link ECU stuff is gonna do in the car. We wanna learn a little bit how the whole process works, and it's kind of interesting for us because we're not experts on it, so we're gonna let the experts explain here is the car. The nervous face of a man that waited a long time to get his car mapped. Yeah. Very, very nervous. Leave him alone. Be gentle with him. Though, that. <laughs> we, had, we had to stop on the way up and everything today, just so we could we get rid of me nervousness. We the car in a very dark shed, so you can't yeah, see a whole yeah, lot. But squint, you can actually see it. It's in there somewhere. Talk us through the car, Dave. The spec, obviously, to remind everybody, we started off with a very rough, well, too rough, but kind of a rough S15 shell. Yeah. And then a lot of bodywork. A lot of bodywork. Yeah, it was a pair of white S15, and it was standard. Obviously, I put the Argent Labo kit on it. Obviously, Workmeister spot a K24, because it's only five grand to put one into an S15. <laughs> 30 grand later, here we are. <laughs> Welcome to Car Building 101. It escalated quite a lot, like even down to all the AN fittings and braided lines everywhere. Obviously, brand new precision turbo, skunk two inlets, K2 on the injectors and fuel rail. Like, the list like goes on. Like, How I far think. did the five grand get you? <laughs> Do you know what? About this far. Do you know what? About this far. I was literally told. I was literally told that the five grand will have that engine sitting in the car with a Honda at the ECU running 500 horsepower. Right. So I went and bought the swap kit that included the sump and the turbo, and that was the five grand gone. <laughs> so what we're here today? To, obviously, it's a pretty looking car. Yeah, and so you guys cool. have done an amazing job. Uh, from C13 did a lot of work on it. Celtic Customs, Celtic Customs. Lot, like this is beautiful to be fair, looks great. But today we wanna know what all of our Link ECU stuff is doing in the car because we obviously run it, we know a lot about it, but what happens to, with us a lot of time is put it in, we send it to geniuses like you, then it comes back and we go drifting. Yep. But we're not too sure what's happened in the meantime <laughs> to make that happen. So today we're gonna get your advice on what, you, what the process of mapping is, because that's something that we don't really know a whole lot about. We assume, I think, a lot about mapping, or people assume a lot about mapping. Mm -hmm. But today I kinda wanna go through the process of what you go yeah, through. So yeah, yeah. what's the first thing you do when you get a car in for mapping? First thing, well this one's pretty good. The guys have this running. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get the wide band in, get the knock link on, set the fuel pressure, make sure oil pressure is good, make sure water's good. After that, we'll be setting the base timing and then plug it into the ECU, going over all the settings, make sure all that's right, start with a bit of fuel, and after that, we'll just keep winding up and see what it'll do. So it's keep, kind of keep on winding, that's what we're going to hear. Yeah, you sure? Well, just keep sure. going. So, the point of the matter is so, the Link ECU that's in this car, um, the idea is that it's obviously monitoring everything that's going on. Basically, yeah, I see a lot of sensors in this too, so it must have the pressure sensors, fuel, oil, everything. So we'll probably start off, set all the limits and stuff first in case anything happens in the dyno, it'll shut off and we'll think, oh, what happened there? Oh yeah, that's what happened. We've just saved the engine. <laughs> yeah, so with the link, yeah. we always say, what we are, we've looked at is that it's sort of a little bit of a fail safe or a protection yeah, for if something goes wrong, it's almost, preceding that. It doesn't let it go wrong and then tell you afterwards, oh, that's yep. gone wrong. It sort of says it before it's happened or it shuts something down. So you yeah, can go yeah. and check that problem if a fitting is not quite right or yep. something's leaking or whatever. We've and saved a lot of engines because of that too. Yeah. And that's the good thing for me yep. is that you, you've obviously spent, you know, 5,000 euro here. And <laughs> <laughs> with, with change. <laughs> with, with a small bit of math on top. Um, so obviously you want that fail safe in there yeah, just yeah, in case. Because yeah, yeah. Dave, you know, he, he's a guy that doesn't drive them very hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> he might be putting the link under more pressure than most. But the idea is that it's I make sure that you can drive it hard, everything's running correctly, and if it's not, I mean, we've had it happen in the past with your MX-5, we've had it happen with the Mustang, where the car shut off, yeah. and you're frustrated at the time, yeah. then when you go back and realize why it's happened, like a fuel pump's failed, oh, or something, brilliant, brilliant. you're going, oh, thank God, because if that just yeah. kept running, that would be the end of the engine, so, yeah. um, this is, you're like Josh, when we went to put the 1.6 turbo engine with the link in, and they said, an MX-5 stock engine Cheap. will never run over 300 horsepower, <laughs> Four years later, it's still somehow going. Oh, you hope I'm like Josh then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping you're, you're in for the same experience. So you're the only person to ever say that. <laughs> only, only in that sense though. <laughs> Not, nothing else, nothing else. Okay, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, what we'll do is we'll get you get to work, we won't yep. delay you, and we'll kind of jump in and out throughout the video to see yeah, what you're doing. And if you want to kind of keep us updated on what you're seeing and what you're doing, we'll kind of hopefully learn a little bit. 
let's get, get to it. Up here. So there's a reason why this has taken oh. over a year to build, I would say, and... Look at the pipe cuts on the water pipe alone. And what's the benefit of what's the benefit of that being? It looks good. I love pie cuts. <laughs> That's well, and then I've, I've seen throttle cable mounts before, yeah. but none to the extent of this. <laughs> like, is that going to be better throttling? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can press the throttle faster. Let's be honest. Like that. What is the point of any of it from the start? That's the whole point of yeah. these cars. What's the yeah. point of any of it? Like, why would you even build a car like this? The whole point is it looks cool. You're contemplating it. Why did I, I just wanted to go fast? <laughs> Anyone out there who wants to go fast? Anybody? I want to go fast. Pretty much, I've lived most of my life by that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get the gussets now. I mean, that's a very nice touch, you know. Yeah, I like gussets. Place that's not really needed, but I mean, there's more here as well on the back of the shroud and everything. On the back? You just you need stuff like that, you know. You need, you need Why do you need them there? <laughs> There's no strength needed there. <laughs> but it looks cool, Josh, okay? That's the whole point. It just looks cool, Josh. That's all yeah, it is. Yeah. It just looks cool. Uh, you have to explain to me, I wanted gussets absolutely <laughs> everywhere, so. A mustache, so you have no idea what looks cool. So <laughs> bring up the mustache. It's, it's, ba it's barely even noticeable. It's barely even noticeable. Barely even noticeable. <laughs> a bit like the turbo on this. Can't be the VTEC, you know? I'm all about that VTEC, like. Let's see if you can beat yesterday's one, though. That was, that was a little 1800. There's a 653 wheel horsepower out of an 1800. Let's 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 see if you can beat 1800? that. 1800. Oh my yeah. god. I won't. <laughs> you know, even try to get one run more. I say try and get 700. First start of two year build. It's exciting. I just worried about the camera on the floor. four-door Toyota. Oh. Why oh no? That, that's so hard to know which one it is. Oh. That is a Laurel. You think it's a Laurel? No idea. Well, Laurel's a Nissan. So that's a bad start if you think it's a four. I think it's a... Ah, it's a Toyota Cressida. A Cressida? It's a Cressida. Oh, Cressida. Cressida, Cressida, whatever you want to say. I don't know. They're too confused. How many bloody four-door Toyota? But blue interior. That is... That's classy floor right there. Okay, so you got blue dash. Blue dash. Blue floor. Blue seats. If blue like, steering wheel, blue everything. It's, it smells of old blue. I think it was a blue car, not so much anymore. Could be a very cool car though when it's done. We've got some more drift cars. Part of my crew here. Jazzy. It's a nice paint job, that's like a pale paint job. Yeah. Would you be a big fan of these, Dave? It's a nice 100. She's real deal. Not, <laughs> she's she's not a real deal. She's not one of fake Altezas. It's got a lot of dashes in. It's got a lot of dashes. It's only got one dash. It's not dashes, it's gauges. gauges. Yeah. What are the gauges for? Stuff. Well, there must be something going on in it if it needs all those gauges. Well, I don't know. If it's let's uh, reveal its let's secrets. Reveal the secrets. What do we think's in here? A 2J. You think a 2J? I have no idea. Oh my god! You, oh, no, almost, it's a 1J. It's a 1J. That's well, cool. That is why it needs all those So, tick stays boxes. Don't mind IS200 diff. Not the standard engine. And it's something with more power. And not the standard kit. And this has both. So, that's my approval. Not massive fan of the blue chrome windscreen. But other than that, you know what, I saw one of these on the way down, I was actually kind of digging it. It's not too bad actually, now that I see it. it I, I, I actually quite it like it. I like the wheels. Cool, old school MR2. Oh, look at this. You've got enough PS's. I know. Oh no. I think that's, a, that's, a that's the again. same one. Surely it's a Casita. Casita. Surely. Oh, I don't even know what that is. It doesn't even say. It's a gra Grande. It's a Grande. <laughs> a Grande. It's an Australian import, so I don't know what that is. Looks cool though, it's got the old school stuff in it. This one doesn't have a blue interior though, it's got a grey interior. Right, you don't like that, it's got the epixy in there and everything. Old school gauges, old school stuff, yeah. It's nice. Cool and then here. This looks like it fell off the boat coming from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the moss around it is just as much. Oh. Oh, it's creaky. Oh, I can't even go. Oh, it's got no engine. There's, there's nothing in there. Look at this rubbish car. 
Hang on a second, something was said pretty cool about this. So this is getting, this was uh, Darren Coleman's who's here and it's, he blew up, his brother blew up his engine. And David it's down, blew up the engine. David blew up the engine. And it's down here getting a new engine and he suggested something pretty cool. He reckons, cause my Supra, my new GR Supra is gonna go for mapping very soon. And he reckons we should have a drag race between his Mark IV with the 2J and my new Supra. So if you wanna see that, let us know in the comments. Cause we were having a little bit of smack talk about it later on where I reckon the modern car has more traction and more ability to go faster, it's got a faster knot to 60. Although he'll have about 600 horsepower, out of 500 horsepower, I feel like there's not much in it. Here's something you'd like, Josh. Why would I like that? Because you love these little things. I'm done with them. You've done with MX-5s? Yeah, I've grown out of them. You've grown out of them? It's good you have because you four of them. Yeah, they're, they're a bit too small for me. Who are you fooling? You have a mustache now, you're more MX-5 than you've ever been. Wow! This is class. I, I don't this know. this is described as the ugliest JDM car. But also the coolest if you put a kid on it. This is a Toyota Verosa, I know what this is. It's massive. It's, it's huge. It is ginormous. It Look honestly, at the size of the next to the MX-5. It's twice the car. It's the most unusual design for a four-door saloon from Japan I've ever seen. Just weird lights. It looks like the lights are from the G35 uh, Nissan, like the 350Z, uh, the G35 version. It looks like those with a grill from a Renault van with wide arches that are standard. It's crazy looking. Do you know what I think it's like? It, I think it's like China tried to make a JZX and it's like the cheap knockoff and this is what they came with. They, they didn't quite get it right. But you know what? Because you put the kid on, on them, they look unbelievable. Like that is an aggressive looking car. It is aggressive. Kind of looks like a Daisy at the front. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like a lot of things. I will agree with you. It has kind of got that cool factor. Absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, yes. Look at the style in here. Bride seat or brood seat, if you want to say it. Why are you um, still going with that? Yeah. Oh, everything is just perfect. Gnarly steering wheel, all the gauges. That's a very it's cool. Got car. a link in there somewhere, I assume. Yeah, linky seat. Link sticker. That's a cool car. It's probably got a good bit of power, too. Yeah, at least I know which one this is because it look like all the rest of them. So at least there's one four door Toyota that you can just go. That's a Verosa. Yeah, there's there's no getting away from that now. Nice S14, and then Starbo. You like these? I don't like them like them, but I, I they do remind me of the good times when people could buy performance hot hatches for like four or five thousand euro from Japan, and they were actually pretty quick and pretty fun and reliable. So these cars were so influential, I think, in the whole like these and the Honda Civic Type R, pretty much the whole Irish car scene was built on those two. So I had good memories. They were a good little car. I wouldn't buy one now. It, it had a purpose. Dash bus, interesting. White door cards, not sure about that now. That is jazzy. There's a lot going on there. Do you know, it's, I ain't it's, sure about think, the white dashboard. Yeah, do you think a lot of this stuff is like, it's all in loop? Like, it's cool, then it's uncool, then it becomes cool again. That's the weird thing about cars. It's like anything, it's like fashion. I'm sure fla glow. flares are gonna come around at some yeah, point. Underglow, Lambo doors, sparkly paint, always uncool, then it became cool again, so. You never, don't doubt it, because then this, this video could date badly in a couple of years, we're like, white dashboard, unreal. That's what everyone's doing. Anyway, let's go back to the S15. Absolutely zero idea what he's doing. It's exactly how I'd imagine a mapping program to look like. Okay, so in the split moment the camera is off, the heavens have now opened, and in typical Irish weather, it is absolutely pissing it down. So, I'm not sure if any of you viewers have been to a dyno session before, but it's not as simple as just hooking the car up to the dyno, doing a few power runs, and it's done. There's a lot of the car not being ready, changing things, getting the engine tuned right, sometimes bedding the engine in, and all sorts of stuff like that. So we've been here for four, four hours, maybe five hours, maybe, and um, the magical moment has now come for the car to hopefully start doing some proper power runs.
Because if we're in anti sorry, launch control. Launch control, yeah. yeah. You'll, be, you'll be into racing, would you? He, he said that uh, it might be a bit harsh in the engine. Do you want it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Extreme thumbnail I've ever done. <laughs> Why did you want launch control? The launch control turned the camera off. <laughs> you want more power? Nah, do you know what? I've been chasing 600 for so long now, like I just. I won't actually. Can we just type it in and just show it to you and say 600 zero, 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 go, hey. nah, I wouldn't be the same. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and like, all, all I need is injectors and it's up over 600. What is it at the moment? 575. It's over. It's enough. It's over, everybody. It's <clears throat> over. Oh my god. You were complaining oh. of the price of the conversion and you're going more now. You couldn't put more pots and bangs in, Rich, no? Uh, <laughs> there's probably none left. <laughs> I mean, found it. Alright, so after all the pops, bangs, flames, frighteningness, nervous Dave stand outside <laughs> pacing around the yard, you fixing a few bits and pieces, the final power figure was? Uh, maxing out the injectors in it, I made 570 something? 575. 575. Yeah, yeah. And with bigger injectors, it'll probably do? 600 plus. And with race fuel, it'll probably do? Probably 700 maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing that you want, anyways. That's, that's, that's going to be the, the next mission. Yeah, all you want to do is break 600, and now you're here having conversations about 700. That's a, that's a good <laughs> thing. It escalated fast. In fairness, if he hadn't said anything about the race fuel, I probably wouldn't have even thought about 700 horsepower. So, Rich, we want to do a little quick run through of everything that you went through today yeah. and how you made a car that had probably a base map when it came in with very little horsepower make all the horsepower. So what's the process for you? So you strap it down, you plug it in, and then there's yep. all this Excel sheet stuff here that we generally don't understand. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the laptop. So we basically started off with something that looked like a mountain range, which wasn't that good. So basically have to span it out to the proper RPM, get all the boosts set out, everything, and then basically start tuning. So basically start down there, work your way across, work your way up, work your way up, and around here you get into the boost. So this is where the VTEC also kicks in in the boost, so you can see the big jump. So basically as the table jumps up, the power jumps up. So the more, 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 more. That's where it's on peak torque around there where the fuel is, and it sort of falls off a bit. Oh, Daisy, you look at it. No, I, think it's, I forgot that it's got VTEC. Yeah. So this has, it's got boost and VTEC happening almost. No, 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 no. This has boost, it has VTEC, and it has VVTI. So it's quite That's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a whole separate table down here for the VVTI. So that's your VVTI tuning this. So basically down low, it likes a lot of VVTI as the rays will top it fades off. So that's one complicated part of it. Another complicated part, well, it's not as complicated as the VTEC itself. It seems to like kicking in around 5,000. So you have a lot of things to play with on these engines. They're pretty, so you pretty tricky. you kind of want it sort of almost to smoothly happen across you all three things. As much torque as possible the whole way through the rev range. Yeah. So that's how you're working the VTAC, basically does your up top power and the VVTI sort of keeps your torque nice and flat everywhere. So we've kept torque as flat as we can this and it's making power. So we limit it at around 9,000. It's starting to drop a little bit of power up there, so that's about normal. So nine, like it's just over, not, what, 9,2? It's kind of maxing out there? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. So 9,200 RPM is quite high, obviously, yeah. but Honda engines will go high. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot that you have VVTI. VTEC and boost happen yeah, all at the same time. So difficult car to map? Day, very tricky this one because compression is very, very high. <laughs> so this is um, so an unusual car to map, but you've obviously used Link ECU on this. Yeah. This allows you to read all of this stuff. Yeah. You can also put in launch control, anti-lag, all the goodies basically. Okay. And then it all runs through the dashboard in this car as well. So is it just those two switches down there? There's so one's anti-lag. There's the one on the left. And the rear heater switch is the high low boost. And then the one the rear, rear heater the switch? Anti -lag. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So you've programmed the rear heater yeah. switch. Rear heater switch is... Until it's, a, until it's a winter morning now. You know, <laughs> and he's, he's going to have to use the exhaust flames to defrost the back yeah, window. Just, just turn the launch control on. That'll defrost anything. Defrost the whole driveway. It'd be actually <laughs> and the neighborhood. So yeah, yeah. we actually, we're learning a small bit as we go. Yeah. Because, uh, and again, we've watched this car from 
a shell yeah. all the way now to making flames and power, which is uh, like a really long journey, to be fair, Dave, like a two year journey. But like with all the work that's going into the car, it's so unique. It's the first for Ireland, as far as I know, in terms of a road car anyway, yeah. uh, with that kind of power anyway. Yeah. And yeah, it's been a successful day at the time. They're not always successful. This one was pretty successful. Thank you to Richard for allowing us down. No problem. We've had a little bit of a rummage around all the cars around yeah, as well yeah, outside yeah. before it rained. Um, so there you have it. That's what a Link ECU can do to a K24 Sylvia and a very good tuner, obviously making it all work together. And if you want us to see, come back and try and see if this thing can break 600 or 700 horsepower, let us know in the comments below. Other than that, I've gone half deaf in the last half an hour. <laughs> Might need a little bit of a sit down. So let us know if you like the video, if you like the car, if you want us to do more of these dyno runs in the videos in the future, let us know. We'll see you guys on the next one.